Hi, and welcome to episode two of Grumpy Young Guy Reviews. The grumpy guy, well, that's me. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about buying used electric vehicles. Um, and we're gonna make that comparison between buying a petrol or diesel vehicle and buying a used EV. And we're actually gonna look at something quite specific on how potentially electric vehicles can be hacked to make them more saleable um, before the unsuspecting buyer actually purchases them. So before we go into that, we're gonna look a little bit about first on when buying a used petrol or diesel or even hybrid vehicle, um, what, what are the kind of things we look for? So I think most people start off with mileage, they start off with service history, and they start off with the typical condition of the seats, um, you know, because excessive wear to the seats can indicate the vehicle has done higher mileage um, than it's actually displaying on the dashboard. So um, we kind of look at all of those things, we look at how many um, previous owners it's had, and we you make an assumption based on that on how how real that vehicle is has has any, has anything been altered mileage perspective um, you know and a lot of cars don't go through this this is for the kind of very very small minority but let's consider that I was one of those small minority sellers that either privately or through a company I wanted to make that vehicle look younger than it was or look like it had done less miles than I had well. The first thing I would normally have to do is contact a mileage correction agency and they would come and they would perform mileage correction which is perfectly uh, legal because you might have the clocks changed and you know replacement ones because they've broken and they come in and they correct the mileage um, to ensure that the new clocks have got the vehicles correct mileage on. I wouldn't say it's common practice but it does occur probably kind of more than we think really so you know considering buying that ice vehicle that petrol or diesel or hybrid that's kind of what we consider we consider the the look the mileage the age um, and, and kind of everything to make that informed decision we may even look at the engine we look at the oil condition um, you know and all that forms our opinion on that vehicle now if we switch over to buying an electric vehicle, we still look at some of those things. We still look at the condition of the vehicle. We still look at the interior, how it's been treated. We look at the vehicle's service history as well. Um, but for most people, when buying a used electric vehicle EV, they're gonna consider two things. They're gonna consider how many miles they've done and what is the condition of the battery. Now. If we think, why is the condition of the battery so important? Well, it's usually due to the price. Replacement electric vehicle batteries are not cheap. They're coming down in price as, as the years go by. But ultimately, if your vehicle gets to the point where the mileage isn't good enough, then you're going to have to have a replacement battery or a repaired reconditioned battery. And that is the biggest concern for most people. So. When you're buying your electric vehicle, you're going to be looking at battery condition. You know, what's the usable life of the battery? How many miles will that battery take me? And, you know, Nissan, have, I believe, have Nissan have recognised this. So, on the Nissan Leaf and the Nissan, the Nissan Leaf 24 and 30 kilowatt hour and the 40 kilowatt hour, there is a nice simple display on the clocks to give you a state of health. So, considering the age of the vehicle, considering the mileage, the charges, you know, what is the general health of that battery like? So we're gonna we're gonna switch over and have a quick look at the dashboard of this 24 kilowatt hour leaf and we're gonna look at how that's displayed and then I'm gonna come back to see how that can actually be hacked. Okay then so we can see the state of charge of the vehicle and we can see uh, the range and importantly here down the side, I can see the number of bars. If we count this leaf, it's got 12 bars. But again, we're gonna assume this vehicle has done some mileage and it's either done high mileage or it's been rapid charged very, very frequently. And that's certain things that can sort of lead to the degradation of the battery's state of health. And again, in the later 24, sorry, the later 40 kilowatt hour leaf, um, that's just displayed um, within the menus there. Okay then, so we're ready to connect to the vehicle. So we have the, uh, the device that plugs into the car, the VCI. Uh, and we're just gonna 
concentrate on the actual um, connection here just so you can see what's going on so um, if you put in the Nissan Leaf this is a 2016 and I've gone over to the electric vehicle side and as you can see there we've got all the various menus um, for the electric vehicle system which we're going to look through in a moment so you've got the charger the um, electric vehicle system we've got direct communication to the battery the motor uh, the regenerative braking system which is kind of combined but has a separate communication protocol so what we're talking about now then is if that I wanted to make this vehicle um, appear almost better than it was so I'm going to start with communicating with the electric vehicle system and I'm just gonna communicate so if we consider why would a function be available that would enable me to reset all the charging history to reset all of the capacity tests on there and actually that's because a lot of aftermarket workshops are going to have to work on these vehicles they're going to have to replace batteries they may have to replace motors um, so it's important that the aftermarket that that independent workshop has that ability to do that and not just on the dealer so we're just going to do a quick check first for fault codes which is good that there's none found and then I want to show you into the adjustment menu here so you can see from here straight away one of the things I can do if replacing the battery is to clear the deterioration data so part of this is it forms the state of health of the battery so if this down was down at 10 bars clearing all the deterioration data um, would actually bring that state of health back to the full percent because the hybrid system the electric system sorry has no data on on how what the state of health of the battery is now that state of health is calculated in, in using a few different parameters. It looks at the battery voltage. Essentially, it's looking at the amp hours of the battery. But to kind of get a good at, um, to get a good reading on that, it has to cycle the battery's voltage. It has to watch how much amps it's pulling, and and do that overall calculation. So, of course, if I was going to be replacing that vehicle's battery, then one of the items I'd need to do would be to clear the deterioration um, data off the old battery because of course I don't want to put my new battery on and it still says I've only got a um, you know a, um, a low state of health so you can see when it's due to be done it's the erase the, the deterioration data of the battery and it's d designed to be done at um, when the battery is replaced so you can see here so all I would have to do there is now click the go button and that would be able to erase all of that data. So sort of almost imagining now that I actually was somebody that didn't replace the battery and I just wanted my vehicle to look better than it was, ready for sale, then straight away I, I can go in there. But of course the, the kind of battery data, just the state of health, doesn't kind of tell the whole story. So if we look at some of the other ones we can do, um, this one here is if we were to replace the battery junction box, Again, it performs a very, very similar thing. But what I want to do is just exit out of here. And I want to go back to the main menu. And we're going to look at the charger. Because with more and more tools that the home user can buy and, and when going and buying a used car, Leaf Spy, for example, it's very, very cheap. You can see how many times the rapid the car has been fast charge, slow charge, rapid charge and of course if I'm looking at vehicles I would prefer a vehicle that had been slow charged the majority of its life. If a vehicle has been rapid charged constantly then that may have an effect on, on the state of the battery. It really really would. So again we just double check we have no fault codes. That's a, that's a good thing. Again if I go into the adjustment menu I can now see the charge history and one thing I can do there that will read the history out and, and sort of tell me then whether um, the car has been rapid charge regularly uh, or not. And it only again only works when when it's present. It really so kind of gives you the, gives that idea from there really. So if we look at any of the other elements of the system, one thing that is interesting is that these motors appear to be coded. So if we go to the motor control unit, you should notice 
that if I was a garage and I had to replace the motor, okay, let me just check my full codes, that's good. So you can see here, when replacing certain items, they have to be coded and it tells you there's a code which is on the plate and that code has to be inputted in when that item is replaced and this one it's called a resolver number so if we just go to the top it gives us a nice help file here um, and it's due when the drive motor has been replaced the inverter has been replaced or both of them you kind of end up having to um, reprogram them in just as you would on a diesel engine for an injector um, a lot of engines now are having to do that simple reprogramming when replacing something simple like an air filter. So there you go. It kind of gives you an idea of what's possible on these vehicles. And just to kind of make people more aware that if I did want to be untrustworthy um, and I did want to make that vehicle appear much newer, then that is something I can do. And there we go. So this video is designed really just to make people aware that of course if buying a petrol or diesel engine, the fact that it's been clocked is not that easy to do. You usually have to use specialist software, um, that which most normal garages don't have. Um, you know, generally mileage correction companies, they have to purchase this um, and it's separate to standard de uh, dealer tools, it's separate to aftermarket tools. Um, but with electric vehicles, when we're buying a used one, we rely heavily on the mileage, but we do rely heavily on the battery's condition to make a decision whether we want to buy that vehicle or not. And as you can see, that using a, a very good um, independent tool, and again, there are lots of them, that we can perform that reset, and I could make this vehicle look much more valuable than it actually is. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you do, then please like and subscribe and um, look forward to the next video. So the next video is going to be about ProPilot. I did promise that on my first video, but I just haven't got around to recording um, some elements of the video. So the next one is gonna be on ProPilot and we're gonna be looking at how that operates and if we push it to the limits, um, how is that, How? where are we now in that standard of vehicle autonomy? So, uh, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.